but you're evolving as well. And more. So that would be the third aspect of my yeah. incarnation, I would say. So the first would be service to others in the form of being an articulate teacher that is mm -hmm. able to distill different paths and help people wherever they're at on the journey. And leave something both for mainstream as well as for the wanderers, the seekers, the adepts that really want these higher, mm -hmm. finer knowledges. Mm -hmm. um, second would be to be an expression of freedom, rebellion, integration, balance, weirdness, whatever it might be, however it shows up. And third would be my own evolution. Yeah, talk adding, about that. Adding to my native level, which only entered into being uh, really a few years ago. Mm -hmm. it, that became more prominent as I started, you know, as I undid a lot of these mm. um, knots, those sort of mm -hmm. man-made, created ego knots and programming. I reached a certain level where now the journey started to include that third element, mm -hmm. which is that more deliberately I am able to, from a native state of where I come from before this life, grow using this life. Mm -hmm. So an example of that would be that um, a, like my native state I would describe as a high um, or late sixth density state, mm -hmm. which is still individuated. There's still a... Um, a soul, a sense of, a, of an I am. And a, a separateness mm -hmm. uh, in form anyway, yeah. Yes, so well, it's, it's deeply suffused with an awareness and understanding of oneness at that level. Like there's a great sense of unity. It's like you're flooded with light and union and oneness. But it is still understood from the vantage point of an individuated self. Mm -hmm. even though that's a group right. consciousness. You're still looking out of those eyes, you're saying. You could say it in and, that way, but we're talking a totally non-physical yeah, reality, yeah. group consciousness identity. Okay. So it's not so much through the eyes, but I get what you're I saying. I get what you're saying. Yeah, it's God. through a self, you yeah. could say. It's filtered the through. The of being. Yes. Okay. As Ra states in the book, for example, is still we are Ra, even at our stage of evolution, knowing the Creator as clearly as we do, knowing that all is one, still to this date. We are Ra. Mm -hmm. There still is identity left, a sense of memory, a sense of. And a lot of beings hold themselves at a high sixth density state to be able to still maintain individuated thought so that they can teach and be of service to creation. So that threshold between sixth and seventh density is kind of the threshold between looking at creation and the different evolutions and the past timelines of the past selves, mm -hmm. functioning as a higher self to our previous selves being available to creation, to the calling for, for help and support and clarity from beings of all kinds of mm -hmm. civilizations. And seventh density being the really the turning away from creation or manifestation to the creator itself. Mm -hmm. And at the expense of individuated thought, at the expense of um, memory, at the expense of individual nature. Mm -hmm. And so in seven density, that's the journey to really becoming the awareness of all that is and losing oneself in the process. That's your next step. That's, what, that's what's been marinating mm. more recently for me. Mm. And then eighth density would be where the ocean of, of allness disappears back mm. into the one original, infinite, indescribable perfection, mm. absolutely devoid of manifestation of any kind. And do you think out of that ocean there becomes an individuation as an expression of the ocean, like, like a Jesus or a Buddha, where they, even though you are individuated, you're not, that's the illusion, or maybe that's what you're calling sixth density. In the yeah, sense, then at that state, um, the being is the creator, meaning yeah. it's the most humble servant you can imagine. Mm -hmm. And the most humble servant means it can look very arrogant. <laughs> it can look whatever way. It can look very loving. It can look very this. It's so humble that it no longer maintains individuated thought. Mm -hmm. It is completely run by infinite intelligence. Right. The biases have been cleared. There is no sense of wanting from this world. Mm. Are people getting this, at least the, what you're saying, six density? When you're in your groups, you know, mm. uh, you're talking and there, uh, or is there still so much? I mean, I guess for some people there mm. is, but do you find that a few people are, are the light bulb is going on? And yes, yes. They recognize at deep levels what I'm speaking of. Uh -huh. And do you think this in 2035, there's, there's this mass awakening where the collective will get? Um, is that what you're saying? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. If they don't, they don't. Uh, right. No, when I, when I say a happy planet or a, an awakened civilization by 2035, I mean that relatively speaking. Okay. I, don't, I don't mean we're all going to be like Buddha or Krishna. 
Mm -hmm. um, that's not in our books. That's not relevant in this density. Uh -huh. So there will be wanderers, that, which is uh, the dual side of my task of teaching is one is to deliver something to the masses mm -hmm. of each level. I'm actually wanting to create a school that follows these densities at this point. Nice. So that whoever you are, whether you want to just learn how to clear your beliefs and manifest dimension, or you want to know who you are at the soul level and why you came here and what's most appropriate for you to be of service to, or you want to become a complete mirror sage and realize that there is no individual I and merge with all that is, or you want to realize the one infinite absolute beyond that, that there is, there's an inclusive school for people of all levels there with facilitation and classes and understandings that is delivered. Because mm -hmm. if you look at anything in our society, for any other field, we have a structured school. You don't go tell your kid when they're four years old. It's really important that you learn math but I have no clue where you can learn it. Just go to India for six months, go find whatever books you can find, maybe, possibly. You know, we send them to school because that's where you learn everything. Yeah. With spirituality, there's so much waste of time and yeah. energy and seeking expenditure because... And dogmas from the past. And dogmas you, from yeah, the past, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So there is no clear, modern, universally cosmically backed up school system for spirituality it's all, as i see spirituality on earth it's in need of a massive upgrade and it's largely culture mm -hmm. what we call spirituality is largely cultural expressions yes. of of the mystical but nothing wrong with that there's beautiful mystical traditions and and uh, cultures but it is culturally tainted meaning yeah. it's not clear science it's not the science of spirituality yeah. it's not backed up usually by the way that the ETs and the higher levels actually all correspond with each other. Mm -hmm. So I want to create a school that allows for that entire progression so that people, regardless of where they're at, if they suddenly feel the desire to go to a higher density understanding, they can do that. And that school is totally honoring of wherever they're at. Mm -hmm. The problem with spirituality, even on that level, is that people judge themselves. If they, ha if they want to play in a lower density, they mm. judge themselves. They say, I should be here. Exactly. And, um, yeah, so that's something that... <laughs> somehow I want to be implicit in that school that that does not happen as much as possible. Yeah, because we have to indulge our desires, like you say. Yeah, you can't suppress them. Yeah. No, you have to... So, it's okay to play in... Oh, it's, to it's totally okay to play. <laughs> and there's also, there's a difference between believing you need things or want things and crave things and play. Like, mm -hmm. in fact, you can only really play when you're already a little much more when you're already more free from the biases and the wants mm -hmm. and the needs and the lack beliefs that you grew up with. So there's a difference between the state of wanting things mm -hmm. or being playful. Mm -hmm. Like Playful is already a freer state. I wouldn't term it in the same way. Mm -hmm. Definitely playfulness is, is relevant for, for where we're at and where we're going. Would you say the ETs that you've met I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. that are, are on playing in the... In the I mean, if you want to relate something about like their level of interaction? Yes. Um, the ones that I'm connected to yeah. the most internally yeah. Yeah. Are, um, are of higher densities. And so playfulness there is very different. Uh, to a lot of human beings, it would look very robotic. <laughs> and um, it doesn't feel robotic. But from the outside in, when you don't have the vibration to back it up, mm -hmm. it would seem so like precise and accurate and mathematical and balanced that it seems like these beings have no fun. <laughs> But they know the pain of fun as we have it, and they know the bliss and the mm -hmm. joy of, of that heightened supreme balance mm -hmm. that they've attained. And in that, there lies that love and that joy, which cannot be compared to what we call fun in our veiled state. We, what we call fun is simply relief from suppression, usually. <laughs> it's relief from believing we're limited. If you have an unlimited view or a near unlimited view, so suffused with love, light, and unity, you, you would look different at fun. Mm. Like you would be at bliss. So mm. there wouldn't be that like, let's just have fun. Why are we so serious? Yeah, let's it's have not some like, beers and watch the ball game. <laughs> right. It, it just doesn't arise there. But there's no judgment of that from mm. that state either. It's just that it's such an involved state that it, the concept of fun is different. But there's still humor. At I mean, these levels, there's still humor. The ET, or what, I don't know what they are, but I get the sense of beings that exist in color forms and colors that, and the interaction of different layers of color and the coming together of different strands is a sort of a creative exchange mm -hmm. that 
I don't know where I get that from, but that's a kind of sense that's... Nice. Uh, yeah. Okay. We, we yeah, like sounds it. very fourth and fifth density. Yeah, I yeah, love the fourth good. and fifth density. That's good. <laughs> I that's like good. to play in creation. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. So, but there is a time coming to the planet, as you see, that will rise up out of the political dramas, the dramas of war, of, of hate, of prejudice, killing, all these things that are... Um, you know, really stop you mad. I mean, that just gets us to an even playing field. It gets us to where we're supposed to be living from when we get there. Yeah. So we can cr create from there. What does the world look like uh, on, on the fifth, fourth density? How do, how do relationships look? How do, on that, in that way, to, yeah. from you? Yeah, from you. I mean, wonderful, playful, loving, um, transparent, honest, true, mm. integrity, alignment all the basic ingredients you need to thrive as a civilization, as a group. But still sensual, still physical, still... Uh, for in our lifetime, yes. Uh-huh. Yes. But we're going away from that. I mean, late fourth density would become more non-physical. Mm -hmm. But there's a reason we're embodied, though, too, right? I mean, there's a... Yes. What, um, what would you say? <laughs> Like, I, I often get this, you know, so, some questioner will rise up in the audience, especially if they haven't been to my meeting so much, and they'll say something like, um, yeah, but or the, at the other retreat I gave mm -hmm. a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. someone said, but aren't we here to experience the flesh? Yeah. You know, like, yeah, I yeah. often get that response. And, uh, no. <laughs> you I, say I, no, we're not. no. No, we're not. He, that's not the main intention. Mm -hmm. I feel that's a human distortion and it's a fear projection onto the higher levels of losing what currently gives you relief. Mm -hmm. But when you actually integrate those higher levels, um, you understand that the reason for being here is not to enjoy the flesh necessarily. That just sort of comes along with the package. Mm -hmm. But that's not the pre-incarnative intention for most people. There may be exceptions mm -hmm. where the life is about exploring that particularly. Mm -hmm. But for most people at this timing on Earth that incarnate here, the intention behind incarnating is not to enjoy the flesh. It's not to smell a flower. It's not to taste food. Those are just natural results. They come it, with the package. It, but it is to, um, to learn, mm -hmm. to share, to expand, to grow rapidly to be under rapid fire of catalyst and challenge and to wake up as much as we can. Mm. That is the joy. That is the expansion. That's the usefulness of this short lifespan, this artificially shortened lifespan of, um, of the human physical entity. Mm. And so you'll see that if, if someone thinks this is all about the flesh and it's about experiencing the flesh. Very third density. That's okay. I'm not <laughs> touching it. And it is okay. It's just that when you die, you'll see, you'll kind of go like lovingly, oh, oh, okay. I see I kind of missed out on what I really came here to do. Mm -hmm. So I generally don't recommend people using that as a cop-out, like we're here to experience this. But I go to nice dinners, you know, I enjoy um, a cigar and a mm -hmm. good whiskey and a good conversation. And <laughs> you I should have had an interview over there. Yeah. Occasionally I enjoy playing video games, watching movies. And mm -hmm. So... There is that which comes with this, this dreamscape that we're in, but it doesn't. It shouldn't become a reason for putting your attention on it all the time. Mm -hmm. It just happens. It's just natural relief and balance and joy and fun. Mm -hmm. The I ideal ad attention span is rested in the question, why am I really here? Mm -hmm. And you'll find that nine out of 10 times, more than nine out of 10 times, the answer is not, you're here to experience the flesh or enjoy the flesh or smell a flower. You are here to learn something. Mm -hmm. There's certain parameters within this life that you have set up for yourself to attract mm -hmm. certain catalysts, certain challenges that force you to expand yourself. And mm -hmm. again, physicality, especially Earth at this time, is mm -hmm. rare enough. That's a part of the reason we're so overpopulated mm -hmm. is because there is a high demand for wanting to squeeze the last little bit out of this, oh. out of this timeline. Uh, get everything out on the table. Because this is your last chance for, uh, it's in a, a very sense. useful. It's a very useful chance. That, but even if you're a wanderer mm -hmm. and you no longer need this to advance so much, it still is a very useful place to be of service and thus mm -hmm. then actually advance. Wanderers are what? You, you've used that? So this is a term from the law of one. Oh, oh, oh. What people would call light bringers or old right. souls. or mm -hmm. Basically, 
a being that has already gone through this third through fourth density transition. Mm -hmm. They're natively speaking beyond where humanity is at, right. but they choose to incarnate as an act of service most of the time, as an act of mm -hmm. love and their own progression too. But we're here to be the absolute. Ultimately, I mean, this when you talk about it, I get the sense everything disappears and that, you know, the form even disappears. Well, how perceptive are we? <laughs> well, it just touches that formlessness in truth me. Truth recognizes truth always. Right. So this ultimately is our beingness. Yeah. It's not very relevant at this density, this incarnation for most people. Mm -hmm. But it will be relevant for those that are intense seekers and that do want to utilize this lifetime to advance their native high sixth density level into union with all mm -hmm. or beyond. So it aids to the soul. Mm -hmm. Once we reach a certain level and we transcend our sort of human conditioning mm -hmm. sufficiently enough to become real empty recipients of mm -hmm. why we are here and what we can do, it's like infusing more and more purpose into this single lifespan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you complete a certain theme that was intended, you're kind of like, well, I'm still alive. What else can I use this incarnation for mm -hmm. that I didn't really expect myself to get to? Mm -hmm. And on the other end of it, it's also like when we incarnate, higher self is not that hopeful, usually. They it's don't not. really have high expectations. They don't? I no. would say that's the purpose of incarnate, for the going for the... There is the hope. There is the hope. <laughs> but there is the knowledge that remembrance is very... The chances of a wanderer remembering who they are are rather slim. But it's easier are, now. Because it is easier now. Hopes yeah. are increasing at a higher <laughs> I think level. So, yes, <laughs> but it's it's always a risk. It's always a risk. Well, which is always, part of the service. It's always a risk the, getting lost in exactly, density. But yes. no. But when you talk about it, and I think like uh, I don't. You know, if you maybe you do, if you stay in that state of being, and I know that's like you're having a conversation on all these levels. But in that state, there's actually a transmission. Do you find that? Do people talk? I mean, mm -hmm. there's great lamas who transmit that or yeah. teachers. Yeah. It's the most powerful teaching in my opinion. It's the transmission part. Yeah. And I often say to people, don't focus too much on my words. Right. Focus on the other 99%. Yeah, so when you're being that, mm -hmm. there's nothing to say. Yes, and in, if I allow myself to slip into that too much, it becomes physically difficult for me to it speak. It does talk about that. What do you mean? Oh, but just to speak. It because... becomes difficult to speak. So maybe we don't have to speak. If okay. we... No, no, I'm on a roll now. This is fine. I'm activated. I'm saying if, yeah. I, if I remain in that mm -hmm. state exclusively, mm -hmm. like I also use my conscious attention to rest back into mm -hmm. that state, into the true heart, true self. Like, it's like that black hole. Everything just internalizes and becomes, mm -hmm. merges with the one. And from that state, it's very... But that's it requires <laughs> activation, incentive, uh, desire, passion, inspiration, or whatever uh, catalyst. I was going to say, that makes great television, though. No, <laughs> just going back into that. <laughs> no, I mean, because it's, it's, for me, in the conversation, it's the parts that aren't said. Wonderful. That How about for your viewers? For my viewers, too. It's like, what's yes. going on there? How do I get a sen I mean, sense of mystery in the, sure. like... Interviewing Don Miguel, we just looked at each other for 30 minutes and like, that was a great show. <laughs> so anyway, you, I'm not telling you what to do, but it's like that's, that level of beingness emanates for viewers. I mean, why not? Mm -hmm. They're, it does. Yeah. I mean, so feel free to go mm -hmm. into the black hole. Well, the, the thing is, nevertheless, it transmits even when I'm speaking. Uh -huh. So it, this addresses both audiences, mm -hmm. those that benefit from the words and those that mm -hmm. can see mm -hmm. deeper too.